We just set a new Nomergan world record speed run time at 14 minutes and 12 seconds. And I'm gonna break down the run for you guys so you can see what goes into the thought processes when you see a speed run happening. And not only is this obviously the fastest run in the entire world, but it is almost two minutes faster than any other Alliance run. This is the run right before it, but that's us as well. And you can see, obviously we do not have shamans. That's the issue between Horde versus Alliance. Shamans are just so incredible incredibly good. I would expect Onslaught to put up a better time than this. They ran a run with zero healers and zero melee DPS, just an enhanced shaman, but they have three shamans, obviously, as you can see. We have to bring warriors. Warriors are a less good version of shamans currently, but here is the run. Let's break it all down. And if you guys notice anything unique in there, you guys can, can let me know in the comments. So the speed run starts here on Grubbis. You'll notice before we even pulled, you'll see those goblin landmines on the ground right there. Those will just give us a little bit of extra damage on the boss. And you are purely focusing on burning this boss as fast as you humanly can. You can notice the warriors at 1300, 1400 DPS here. And then once it's down, you are just going to zoom as fast as you can. For Alliance, you have to use Swiftness potions, but Horde here can actually, they actually get summoned here from the like Camp Tarajo in the Barrens, and you'll have that speed buff there, so you'll never have to use Swiftness potions. Then you just jump down to Viscous Fallout. You need to use Parachute Cloaks or some sort of slow fall to get down to Viscous Fallout, and if I was smart, I would have canceled Ored, my actual slow fall there. Boss instantly pulled and is picked up. You can also notice we do have trash pulled in with this as well, which is all being hit with living bombs, living bombs from the mages, which also means the mages probably have aggro quite a bit and it can get a little bit scary. You do ideally not want to get any of the ads spawning on this boss, but if you do, then you just want to actually interrupt them. Now you do see a target dummy is tossed down. That's because some of the aggro was a little bit wonky here and the boss doesn't have sunders. We got really unlucky with our homunculi. There literally, it just went up. I think there was a section in the middle where they had sunders. Now at this point, we are one minute in, one and a half minutes in not even and you'll notice that i kill all three of the low uh health mobs because the slimes already are slower than every other mob in the instance and if a mob is below i think it's 30 percent or 20 percent hp they move slower and then at really low hp below 10 percent, they move even slower and you really don't want a trail of a of like anything to trail behind you by too much. And you also are going to be like, this section is just running. And you also actually notice I feign death during this section. I swap onto trap launcher, which you'll see in a second. But this is also a section where you might notice some stuff, but here we are fighting against the sentries. I get dazed and I believe I might, oh, I don't end up feigning there. We pull that extra pack, not necessary but we pull it just in case for count just in case and you'll notice that on the left here you see that druid the druid ran over and fairy fired the sentry over there now we are going to kill this alarm bot right here and move on and nobody is really attacking too much you can see living bombs are going out but you also notice that i'm not really hitting things unless it has a lot of like aggro on it already then there is the swiftness potion used and the technician on the left you just saw is a range mob he will just throw at us and a decent patrol of the sentry because you do need the sentry now as we're moving in the second you pull this boss he closes the gate basically he spawns the the little mobs and uh the bombs that, that lock you in and that's a little bit scary ideally you are in here instantly like right as everyone is in you instantly pull the boss and you saw my traps go out it got a little bit sketchy Tuki had to mage blink across the traps and I actually will use a target dummy here as well just to be safe because the trap went out a little bit or the trap got triggered a little bit slow. The boss didn't get dragged directly over the trap. And during Crowd Pummeler, now you are fighting all of the trash at the same time as fighting Crowd Pummeler, as you can see. And you just need to focus on not getting hit off, basically. This is like the scary thing. Obviously, the mages are gonna deal with all of the trash and they need to move around the boss. You can see that Donald Spump is at 2.5 thousand damage right now and it's because they're just pumping all of the damage into the ads and now you're focused on doing damage to the boss you can see that they do have mana now and we're going to move on to the next section as soon as the boss goes down you do want to always kite a boss 
towards the exit, like literally always kite a boss towards the exit because you want as little travel time as humanly possible. Now I am swapping myself into the uh, range group here and putting on Nifty Stopwatch. You can see that I equipped Nifty Stopwatch. There will be a swiftness potion from all of the melee to keep up here. And because I am the hunter, I am actually helping the ranged move faster so that they can use a mana potion instead of a swiftness potion at this section. Crix did get moved out. He's the tank, but he also doesn't need to tank anything in this next section. So as you see us moving forward, as soon as we start fighting mobs again, we will, or I will switch myself into the melee group again. But transit time, speed runs are always about transit time. Whenever there is a long distance between you and the next boss, you need to figure out what are the best ways to always min max the speed there. Swiftness potions, nifty stopwatch. Um, I actually get days there on unfortunately. So I think I, oh, I don't have to feign. I actually don't lose threat. So I don't end up feigning there. I thought about it, but I got uh, days during my nifty, which means I'm a little bit behind during this pull. And now I will queue with item rack. I do have macros for this, but I just wanted to queue it with item rack to get my boot swap up because again, I do have the I am using the trap launcher, which you'll see right here. The target dummies are down or one target dummy was down early and Target dummies, the way target dummies work, anyone that's new to speedrunning, is that the second they go down, they taunt. This is really unfortunate. Actually, this, this whole section gets a little bit unfortunate. I kind of go for the drop, and instead of dropping sideways, I get knocked back up. You can always drop here to the left or to the right. You can always drop to the side, and I am i don't know why I wasn't eating there. I should have just ate some food to, to get my food buff back up. So I kind of griefed myself, to be honest. Like I actually super griefed myself by not just dropping to the side and I waited. So we lost a few seconds there. Now we instantly pull the boss as soon as we can. We probably could have pulled it slightly faster. We also do have an ad coming in. That's because the homunculus, as you saw as I turned over, just kind of decided to do their own thing. Now we will focus on making sure that the ad does die so that we have a clean boss kill. This boss definitely can be sketchy. So there's a little bit of damage going into the ad, but also a lot of damage going into the boss. Now with the knockback, we also haven't killed the patrol in this room yet. You might have noticed. So what, what we will do, what, 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 what we will do is whenever we end up getting knocked back into the patrol, we will make sure to try to deal with it. So the patrol is here now comes right in there. There's all of the assistance. I'm not really focused on damaging them, although I could easily hit them with a grenade and I probably should. Um, so I probably should end up hitting them with a grenade. And then I try to make sure I don't get sucked in here or zapped. There is one target dummy that goes out and this is not great. So there's two mobs in this patrol, two of these little mobs that can actually, they're, they're ranged mobs. So look at the amount of time. We already have count essentially, kind of. Um, these range mobs ideally would have all died with the boss. Now we have to run to this next one, the next machine smith, another mob that does not uh, that does not move. It's a range mob, so you have to run to it. And we didn't drop combat at all for our mages. This is a massive, massive issue for Alliance versus Horde. Horde have shamanistic rage consistently, literally three different shamanistic rages per minute because you have three shamans right now. And it pretty much means you never have issues with mana or you definitely have way less issues with mana. So we had to stop there, kill the mob. That was a frost walker, which you need to focus down in speed runs. It could either be a frost walker or a flame walker like you're seeing up in front of us now. So that was a frost walker. Because it was a frost walker, you want to kill it or else it will just infinitely frost bolt volley. Like it can Nova mobs or Nova people, but it also will infinitely frost bolt volley. Now, next is the section here. We have on the left side, you saw the feral druid that's pulling all of the ads, the dark iron agents, and everyone else is pulling all of the ads here in the middle. We will be running forward as much as we can. And you'll see that I believe Oh, I was calling this out. Those mobs weren't supposed to be pulled. So you see the ones all the way on the far side. Those weren't supposed to be pulled, but these ones are. So I go for the volley to grab them, do get them. I had aggro on a mob right there. And the issue with this pull, this is a huge giga pull, right? Grabbing literally all of the ads all the way up towards the boss. The issue with this is 
two things. One, I, we never dropped combat, so I literally haven't been able to swap to get my trap here, which would have been really nice to have the trap live. So this is a little bit sketchy. Now I am, because of that, I was a little bit worried and I, I'm sitting in Viper here like an idiot. And I should be attacking any of the mobs that are high HP. This is what you should be focused on is any mobs that are high HP. I am a little bit griefing here just because of that. The machine smiths, again, don't really move. They're the ranged mobs. and. Ideally, we would pull the boss like right now because you won't drop combat because of the mines that are still there in the back. So ideally, we would have pulled this boss already. We would have started moving into the boss. Now we do engage the boss and we're a little bit far away, but what's gonna happen here on Mechanical Menagerie? This is actually one of the scariest encounters in the raid, especially for speed running. And, but what you're gonna see is we will try to burn down the dragon as soon as you can, which will then allow everything to get hit by its very first uh, overheat. The overheat makes everything take more damage, but it also makes you take damage. You've got this AOE fire aura basically on all of the mobs, but you really want the overheat to go out because you can see already we're at 10 minutes now in the entire run, 10 minutes. And now we have the chicken is super low and we're just pumping into the squirrel. And the other stopgap for our group is the ranged DPS on this fight. So you'll notice in a second that I will look at the sheep. The sheep is a little bit high. And again, in an ideal world, you actually fully always have the overheat on all of the mobs, like the whole time but it's not something that will work out every time. So now everything is a little bit high. We are going to bring the, the dragon down kind of on accident, we shouldn't, but I did notice that the sheep was really high. We do need to swap to the sheep and get the sheep really soon. And the sheep is gonna be the last one to go down. Now, this is the issue. Look at the timer. Look at how much time it's taking for the boss to spawn. The last boss, we lose, we were at 45. Oh my God, this is, there it is at 58. So we lose 13 seconds. This would have been a 13 minute run if the boss had just spawned. Now I've heard that if you kill the sheep last, it makes the boss take longer to spawn. Um, that is that is super grief. Actually, it never spawns instantly, but it spawns pretty quickly, usually not that long. I'm not sure what, what makes that happen. It could be RNG, but it definitely griefs you for sure. But at that time of the kill of Mechanical Menagerie, it was about 56 seconds, I believe, ahead of the last world record right before this run. Now, in an ideal world, if we had 7% more DPS on this boss, he would have phased before he starts casting this, which also would have saved if you look at it right now, wait for him to start phasing and almost another 10 seconds. So if you have enough damage to pump the boss as much as possible, then you will definitely save more time. Here you're noticing goblin landmines will always go out on cooldown for everyone because you need to focus as much damage into the boss as possible. We did have a you do also actually, sorry, you want to go back if you do, or I'll show it during this section, but we did actually kill the boss in the very middle so that it transitions as fast as you can. I believe that's how it works. It, it'll have to, like, there's a little bit of RP where the boss's machine walks back to the middle before he jumps out sometimes. So if you kill him right here, he'll just instantly jump out. And so during the flame phase, you kind of want to keep him here. Now, boom, instantly jumped out just like that. Now he's gonna go do his RP. We're also, I'm gonna feign and drop a trap. You're gonna notice that everybody is trying to stay as high as they can on mana also, but all of the damage is going directly into the boss. The, like everything that is possible for everyone to do is going into the boss, except for we, because we don't have shamans and because it's really nice for a warlock to be able to do this. We have a warlock that is actually just instantly taking out all of the ads and shout out to Crix for playing really, really well this run. Um, I think this is his first world record. So shout out to my boy Crix on his first world record speed run and boom into the last phase already at 13 minutes and 25 seconds. The boss took kind of a second to actually phase there. I feign to drop combat and then we're gonna see again traps dropped. Now, 
I, I still have fat fingered away my aspect. I need to get it back up. There we go. Got it back up. I do one hit in Viper and then swap to Raptor. Probably not worth it, honestly. I probably lost 10% damage on that one hit right there, but it's not really a big deal. I don't think I oom because we kill the boss so fast during this phase. We just go all out and pump as much damage as we can. I potentially could have gotten another Beastial Wrath early, but at this point, we're like, we know we have the world record. You can see the damage here. The Hunter is doing a lot of damage. We got the debuffs up really early here. One of the issues on a couple of the bosses were Homunculus resisted, and if that happens, you're fighting without Sunders or Homunks, and that is like a mega grief, but boom! There it is. The timer comes down to being 14 minutes and 12 seconds. World record! We did it, guys! Shout out to Fake Fresh for the new world record here. They've gotten second in every world first race for Season of Discovery for all of the phases. Only to my other guild, Noda. So make sure to pay attention if you want to see the world first and world first coverage. I will see you guys all here next Thursday. So in basically a week, I'll see you guys all here and have a good one.